All right, William, second chapter of the book of Philippians. Let's dive into the book of pain here. In Philippians chapter 2, we'll start reading at verse 3. And let me say this before why I come to mind. I want to thank all of my media staff for their hard work continuously. Giving this message out. Giving this message out around the world and even the other uh, viewers who take this message and just flood their website with it. Tony Harvin, because there's thousands that have reached out to me who saw this message first when they saw Tony Harvin. And uh, he's giving the message out. Also, another gentleman named C Rock. Yeah, yeah man. He called himself C Rock Smooth. Mm -hmm. Well, C Rock Smooth is tossing this hard, rough gospel out there. And uh, it doesn't matter to me who you are, this thing need to be aired everywhere, all the time. That's right. You got men that's not even born again playing this message. Mm. Women are taking it, who's not even saved, don't go to no church, but they're playing this message. Now, if you're planning to make money but don't obey it, your money gonna be a witness against you. That's right. So you better repent now and obey what I'm telling you. That's right. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and the Lord promised to fill with the Holy Ghost. You know, they call they call Williams my hype man. <laughs> you know, because every time I say something, you know, you hear him all mumbling. He don't realize. You know, you hear every word he's saying all there in the microphone. He just can't help it. Can't help it. Bill, let's have mercy upon him. You pray for him. <laughs> there have been times I talk to him about it and say, yes, look, you have. William, listen, man. <laughs> People are trying to hear what I'm saying, and he's like, I, I, Pastor, Pastor. They look at me and say, I can't help it. <laughs> he said, I just can't sit there and not say something. No way. He said, I got the Bible in my hand and you preaching. <laughs> he said, and I said, he said, so I've tried to sit quiet and I get to be sitting there like a volcano. <laughs> Like a volcano about the bus. Amen. Amen. So you bear with, and let me say this, like Paul said, bear with him a little while <laughs> in his folly. <laughs> All right, script, let's go to work. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, we'll start at verse 3. Follow me. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Don't let nothing be done through, through strife, strife or vainglory. You know, we should not do anything just to get glory or praise, That's right. compliments yeah. from anyone. Yeah. When you work for God, you do it for God and not for selfish purposes. That's right. I'm not like these other preachers. You know, these preachers love attention. They love limelight. I'm totally the opposite. I hate limelight. I'm an extremist. When it comes to privacy. Amen. I love to be home and folks not recognize me. I remember the days when nobody knew who I was. I can go in the market and shop, and leave and come home. Nobody bothered me. I can sit at a red light. Nobody rolling their windows down. Nobody bothered me. I can stand on the corner, go for a walk. Nobody bumping their horn. Nobody in the airport. I remember the days when I was in the airport. Nobody come to me for autographs about nothing. That's right. Nobody want the picture taken because I don't want theirs either. <laughs> but then you have men who love praise. Amen. Love compliments. Yeah. The only one that's worthy of praise is God. Yeah. The only one that's worthy of any kind of honor is God. That's it. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. What kind of glory? Vain glory. Vain. Vain. They build statues to men and women yeah. to commemorate something that they done. That's right. Set aside days to holidays to commemorate their actions. That's right. All right. But all of us vain. Vain. Because with the church, Every day is set aside. That's right. 
to commemorate God's greatness. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 12, and verse 38. Says what? And he said unto them in his doctrine. In here. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. Amen. He said to them in his doctrine. teaching. Beware of the scribes. Beware of the scribes. Which love to go in long clothing. They love to go in long clothing. And love salutations in the they marketplace. They love salutations in the marketplace. And the chief seats in chief the synagogue. Chief seats in the synagogue. And the uppermost rooms at feasts. Yes. Which devour widows' houses. Wait a minute. Let's back up and get in reverse and read that again. Back in St. Mark 12 and verse 38. Uh -huh. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Yes. Beware of the scribes. Look out. Beware. Of the scribes. Which love to go in long clothing. Wait a minute. Hmm. You know, a lot of folk dress just to get attention. That's right. We don't dress models to get attention. That's right. We dress models because that's what the order of God requires. Amen. Then you have those that just dress just to be seen. Yeah. Many people write me and ask me, why you don't preach in a robe like other preachers? <laughs> You'll mess the suit up. What kind of food talk is that? Man. When I die, my suit's going to be left here. Yeah. I don't have suits just to wear, to take care of business or go to, no, no, no. no. If I wear them, they're good enough to preach in and uh, for anything else. That's right. I remember the day I got married. I didn't get a tuxedo. To me, that was a waste of money. For what? Get a tuxedo just to hear the preacher stand up there for about 20 minutes? <laughs> I didn't take it back. I simply got the same suit that I preached in uh, a few weeks ago. Amen. Took it to the cleaners, and got my shirt, went down, uh, got my white material, and set up the sewing machine, and Got my thread and made a nice, crisp, white bow tie. Yeah, I, I sew a little. <laughs> made my bow tie, put my clip in it, sewed the ends, got married, and preached the same night. Same night. I'm going to say, what about your honeymoon? That's lifetime. Amen. Mm -hmm, that's lifetime. But I got married and preached. It was just, it was just too tempting to see all these people standing in the false church where we got married at. They was all lying around the wall, right. standing, standing outside. And I behold, <laughs> there was the wicked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And some righteous. That's right. Amen. My wife came down the aisle and amen. My father performed our wedding was the first wedding he ever done and the last mm -hmm. because he passed away. And uh, of course, we didn't have rings and none of that foolishness. And, and uh, so she came in and got married. And I told the folk, listen, I, I don't believe in that foolishness that you sit around and wait for the bride and groom to come back before you eat. I told him, just eat. <laughs> you go on and eat. We taking pictures. We'll be back. But don't wait for us because I wouldn't wait on you. That's right. Go eat. So uh, we got back and I told him, church is tonight. <laughs> it was like, say what? I said, yeah. That's right. Amen. And we preached heaven and hell that night. Yes, you did. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. Heaven and hell that night. That's right. And the next day we got on the plane, flew to Jamaica. That's right. And preached all week. All week. Took my wife with me. That's right. And took other folk. You know that wasn't no honeymoon. You don't take other people with you on the honeymoon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We left the next day. That's right. That was my first trip to Jamaica, 1989. And preached every day. Amen. Baptizing souls in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Listen. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes. Beware of the scribes. Which love to go in long clothing. And what? And love salutations in the marketplace. Have you ever met men, preachers? They love the fact you notice who they are. Yeah. They change their voice to the preacher's voice, I call it. That's right. 
You know, you talk to them uh, before they got ordained, they was Brother Williams. <laughs> And you see Brother Williams, oh, how you doing, brother? How you feeling? Hey, what's up? What's going on? Hey, before you know it, you get ordained elder. Now you see Elder Williams. Uh, elder Williams, how are you? Well, I'm telling you. <laughs> I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Nobody asked you all that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> are you listening to the old troublemaker? Amen. In other words, your title yeah. shouldn't change you. That's right. Be humble with your title. Yeah. Don't let your title go through your head and ruin you. Mm -hmm. What he said? And love salutations in the and marketplace. Love salutations in the marketplace. And the chief seats in the synagogue. What else? And the uppermost rooms at feasts. Uh -huh. Which devour widows' houses. Wait a minute. More greedy preachers that come right in the widow's house and eat them out of house and home. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And for a pretense. For pretense. For a form of godliness. Make long prayers. They don't mean it. They yeah. don't mean it. You know, coming up in falsehood, I've seen a lot. You know, when somebody want prayer, I just pray for them. Mm -hmm. Screaming and hollering over you ain't going to make no devil run no quicker. <laughs> and ain't going to make you get healed no faster. No. I pray for you and I keep moving. That's right. You know, some folk out of habit, they come up for prayer and then they stand and tell you what they want prayer for. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me what you want prayer for. No. Well, Pastor Jennings, shouldn't you know? No. Why? God knows. God knows. I know how to pray. That's right. You know, some folk get up and testify. Thanks of God, when you pray, call my name. Imagine about a thousand people asking you to call their name. Amen. One of my ministers in Alabama, I'm pretty sure he's watching, Minister Shabazz. <laughs> he always, when I'm talking to him, and before I get off the phone, he say, now, you know what I'm going to say. I say, Shabazz, just get off the phone. <laughs> he said, when you pray, call my name. He said, call my first name, my middle name, and my last name. Amen. And you have people, they be down there, they mean well. Yeah. They be trying to remember all the saints' names. <laughs> I don't do that. I guess ask God to help the body of Christ. Amen. Give them the desires of their heart according, according. to your divine will and purpose. That's right. Whatever their needs are, if it be your will, give it to them. Amen. Them that are sick, give them healing. Yeah. Them that are weak, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, give them strength. Yeah. Whatever is broken in their lives, mend it back together again. That's right. Stabilize their mind. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Strengthen their heart. Amen. Amen. Give everybody desire to contend earnestly for the faith. I know how to talk to God. Oh, yes. You ain't got to stand there and hold me up for the next 15 minutes. Pastor Jennings, pray for my arm, my left finger not working. Pray for my baby toe. I, I got tendonitis in my elbow. I got a twitch in my eye. You ain't got to tell me all that. No, no. Glory to God. That's right. Eh? That's right. I know what to pray and how to pray. How to Am I right, Brother Kevin? Amen. Amen. All right, Williams, come on. And for a pretense, make long prayers. For a pretense. I'm just going to pray for you and get moving. Yeah. I remember I prayed for one mother. She told someone, I thought he'd pray longer than that. Why? How long does it take for God to hear me? <laughs> Amen. How long does it take for God to hear me? Now, you in these churches, you're used to having about 30 preachers lay hands on you and all them spirits get on all you. Spirits. And everybody's screaming in your head. That's right. Bishop shaking your head one way. A homosexual grab your head another way. All of y'all preachers shaking your head. Just shaking. Amen. And you sitting there all over the place. 
Listen, ain't nobody shaking my hand. I just got dizzy from doing that. That's right. I can imagine. imagine. And they say, oh, we praying with power and authority. Praying with power just simply means pray in the spirit. That's it. That's all that is. That's it. For the power of God is nothing more than the Holy Ghost, which is God himself. That's right. Praying with power is when you simply pray with the spirit. That's right. And pray with understanding. Understanding. That preacher can yell over you until he removed the hair out your scalp. <laughs> when it's done, yeah. you have to pray with the spirit. And pray with understanding. All right, let's go back to where we were. Back in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. What is it? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Yes. But in lowliness of mind. Now, whatever we do for God, we want to be how? In lowliness of mind. We want to be a humble thinker. That's right. Let no man think no higher than he ought to think. Than he ought to think, but think soberly. 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 Whatever you do, let another praise thee. That's right. And if someone compliments you, don't swell up like a blowfish. For I say through the grace given unto you know, me. You often tell the ministers, if anybody come and compliment you and say, oh, I enjoy that message you preached today, just tell them, pray for me. That's it. Don't tell them, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's right. I really did something, didn't I? That's right. That's the devil. That's, that's the that's devil. That's the devil in you. Amen. That's the spirit of pride and arrogance. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. Says what? For I say through the grace given unto me uh -huh. to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Wait a minute. Hmm. Don't think no higher than God make you. But to think soberly. How? To think soberly. Soberly. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Don't think you're better than nobody. That's right. Whether you're a preacher or not. That's right. If someone is in sin or struggling with something, don't even look down on them. That's right. I say, well, Pastor Jennings, you know, a lot of folk write me and say, you preach down on people. No, I preach to people. Amen. You think I'm talking down because I'm speaking against the wickedness. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I can't uplift wickedness. No. I have to preach against it. That's right. That's my job. That's your job. I can't do like your pastor do and promote it. <laughs> I have to do like Jesus do and smash it. That's right. Turn over the tables of wickedness and declare the doctrine of God. That's right. All right, let's go back now. Let's have it. Back in Philippians 2 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But in loneliness of mind, let each... Esteem, lowliness, lowliness of mind, of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. That's something you don't see much of. You don't see that much. Esteeming the other better than themselves. Hmm. Compliment the other. That's right. Esteem that individual skill or talent. That's right. Better than yours. That, that's right. Amen. Don't say, oh well. I could have done better than that. And you don't even know how to do half of what they're doing. Amen. It's easy to sit back and complain about someone singing. Yeah. Join in and help them. That's now, right. there's some folk can't sing at all. <laughs> That's right. I admit they can't. That's right. So they fall under another scripture. Another scripture. <laughs> they fall under another scripture right. that only God will only be pleased God with. Will. Make a joyful a noise. 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 Amen. Amen. I can sing a little. Yeah. When I was younger, I used to lead some songs in the choir of the false church. I had a microphone just singing. <laughs> As I got older, my voice got more heavy and more rough. Now my daughters tease me. <laughs> They said, Dad, when you going to sing? I said, I sing sometime when I preach. Sierra and Purge say, no, you don't. <laughs> you talk it. <laughs> you don't sing it. Well, as long as I get through. As long as you get through. And I have a method that if I can't remember the words, I grunt my way through. <laughs> Amen. All right.
right, let's have it. Philippians chapter 2 and at verse 4. Yes. Look not every man on his own things. Look not every man on his own things, but. But every man also on the things of others. This is God instructing us. That's right. Not to be selfish. That's right. That's the only thing that keep me going. Yeah. If I was selfish, I wouldn't be so committed and preaching God's word, feeding God's people. No way. Look not every man on his own things. But every man also on the things of others. When you do this, what kind of mind do you have? Let this mind be in you. Wait a minute. What he just read was the mind of Jesus. That's right. <clears throat> let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this is what I want to work on. Yeah. God people yes. have no room or time to be selfish. That's right. You can't even serve God right. That's right. If you're selfish. That's right. You know, it's like a relationship, a husband and wife. They can't. They don't need for nobody to get married and you selfish. Amen. If you're selfish, it'll never work in a relationship. In the book of First Corinthians. serving God is a lifetime of giving. That's right. Do you hear this? In 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 25. What is it? That there should be no schism in the body. There should be, wait a minute. Hmm. There should be no schism. In the body. No mumbling and grumbling and hearsay and backbiting and all this folly in the body, in the church. But that the members should have the same care. But the members should have the same care. One for another. You know how all the August went in prayer yeah. concerning for me? That's right. You have to be that way for each other. That's right. That's right. Amen. You can't be that concerned like that for me because I'm your overseer right. and less concerned yes. for your brother and sister. Do you hear what the Bible says? That there should be no schism in the that body. There should be none. No schism in the body. Glory to God. Amen. No schism in the body. In the church. But that the members should have the same care. But that the members should, Hallelujah. Bless God. Should Amen. have the same care. One for another. That's plain. That's plain. That's right. When you have the same care, you look out for each other. That's right. That's right. In every manner. Amen. That's why I'm very adamant, have always about taking care of the elderly things. Yeah. Like I mentioned, we want to have our own senior citizens. Uh, residents, right. the biggest school that's on our campus, close to 60,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. We're changing that to a home for the elderly saints. Amen. Amen. We're changing it. Not the other school that where we came out of from holding service, but the largest school is the building you see connected right down here on Lindley Avenue. Yeah. That's the largest school. Gymnasium in there. Cafeteria in there. Everything. Well, we are converting that with God's help to a senior citizens building for the saints. Mm -hmm. Looking not only not looking at your own, at your own. That's but right. making provisions for others. That's right. We have doctors, nurses. All kind of folk metal, medical profession. That's right. What are we looking to do? That's right. We're looking to open up the first Truth of God Health Clinic. Wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. Look not every man. That's right. On his own. On thing, his own. That's right. But on the things of others. That's right. We have brothers and sisters with their CDLs, tractor trailer drivers. Yeah. We have over 33 acres of land in Georgia. Yeah. We, we want to grow our own produce. Right. And get our truckers to haul our produce. That's right. And buy up property and open up our own stores. That's right. Stock our own shelves. That's right. That way we can uh, have, bring employment right. amongst those that's unemployed. That's right. 
Look not every man on his own thing. On his own thing. But every man also on the things of others. We had GED programs. Wonderful. For folk who didn't get their uh, diploma. Yeah. Help them get it. Yeah. We, it's so much that we got in mind to do. Amen. This is this is not just preaching the gospel. No. I believe in the book of Acts, the angel told the apostles, go in the temple. Go yeah. stand in the temple yeah. and tell them all the all words words. of this life. Mm -hmm. So our objective is to help the people of God and those that's not of God. And whether one member suffer. Do you hear this? Still in the book of 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 26. Well, rather. And whether one member suffer. Oh, God is crushing selfishness. That's right. He, he's implementing being considerate. That's right. When one. And whether one member suffer. Member suffer. All the members suffer with it. In order for that to be, all have to care about that one. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? But that the members should have the same care. What? But that the members should have the same care. How? One for another. And whether. Well, hold it. Mm -hmm. Well, if I got a cold. Out of consideration to you, if I have a cold, I don't have one. But if I do, right. out of consideration, I'm not going to come around you. That's right. Why? I don't want you to catch the cold. That's right. Amen. If I have COVID, mm -hmm. then uh, it's like when I've had COVID, no one didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I kept my distance from people. Yeah. And I set a screen up. Right. Oh, there was a few devils on internet why he got that screen up they didn't know why even Wibbs didn't know why no, I didn't. Skaleski didn't know why I didn't tell him to after I put it up right but my consideration I didn't want him to catch what I had that's right and I kept it there that's right until God delivered me from it yeah then we took it down amen so when you are considerate yeah just say if members in the church come to a meeting and got COVID. If you know you have it, then it wouldn't be wise to be among the people. That's right. That's and then right. spread it. Amen. Why? One scripture says, all men mm -hmm. hath not, not faith. faith. That's true. I'm going to put a mask on if I got it. That's right. I'm not going to have it and be all in your face talking and sneezing. Yeah. That's not being considerate. That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? But that the set, but that the members Give should chapter have, and verse again. First Corinthians twelve and read verse twenty five. What is it? But that the members should have the same that, care. Wait a minute. The members should mm -hmm. have the same care. One for another. Well, I got to balance that out with love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. As thyself. As thyself. I better explain that. Yeah. Because the reason why some people are so mean. So selfish, so wicked. I mean, with the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes a woman argue with her husband, or her husband argue with the wife. Why is it you don't love me? Well, first, you can't love what you don't have. In other words, if a man or a woman don't love themselves, don't expect for them to show to you what they don't even show towards themselves. You first got to have self-love in order to give love. That's why some folk are so hateful, because they hate this, they hate themselves. Yeah. And they want to share that hate. <laughs> what did it say? But that the members should have this. chapter and verse again. First Corinthians 12, we're still at verse 25. What is it? That there should be no schism in the body. Wait a minute. No schism. No schism. So if you got the COVID virus, I know you want to be in the church. But you got to be considerate. That's right. That's right. Hmm? That's right. You know, a lot of times they say, well, in praise service, they like to pass the microphone around so you can hear folks saying. They don't need no microphone. <laughs> Just let them sing. Some folks you give them the microphone, they don't know how to put it down. That's true. They keep holding it and try to testify in it. <laughs> they sing their song in it. They stop singing. And then all of a sudden they start testifying. You have think uh, Reverend McGillicuddy is in here. Amen. Just sing to the glory of God and knock off and call it a day. That's right. When you testify, That's right. be considerate. Yeah. 
Don't need to say, I can't tell it all. Stop trying. Amen. Anytime you got a room with about two and 3,000 people, then everyone should consider how long to sing. That's right. And how short to testify. That's true. Are you listening? That's right. Be considerate. That's right. And when a brother leave in praise service, you can't leave praise service walking back and forth with your eyes closed. <laughs> you got to see who's standing. That's right. Waiting their time to give God some glory. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? First Corinthians 12 and verse 25. What is it? That there should be no schism in the body. No schism. No schism. In the church. But that the members should have the but same that care. the members. Amen. You know, on your physical body, you're going to take care of your eyes. Amen. You're going to take care of your hands. You're going to take care of your ears. That's right. You're going to take care of your feet. That's right. That one toe getting messed up, you're going to take care of it. Amen. How much more should we not rather take care of one another? That's right. Looking out for the needs of one another. That's right. Helping the elderly saints up the street to their car. Yeah. Don't allow your children to run past the elderly. That's right. That's right. When the elderly folk walking up the step, and I'm their overseer, yeah. I don't run past them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they step to the side and say, go ahead, Pastor Jennings. I say, no, you go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes they say, Pastor Jenny, you just got finished preaching. I tell them, I'm all right. You go ahead, take your time. That's right. They be holding on to the banner and say, <laughs> Jesus. Who <laughs> ready to go? That's right. Soon the new elevator will be in in a few more weeks. They, they, they just, they just doing the necessary the elevator, the old elevator is not working, and we're putting a new one in, and we're going to also put a chair lift. Wonderful. For the old folk, not for you young lazy folk because the steps make you huff and puff. Run up them steps and just take a breather. That's for the old folk. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on, Williams. First Corinthians 12 and verse 25. What is that it? That there should be no schism in the body. No schisms in the body. But that the members should have the same care. Same care. One for another. Same care. Same care. Like my extended family that came from Bronx and came from Columbia, Lee, Lewis, and uh, Byron, and all the others. Mm -hmm. Well, even though I didn't know them long, but because they're in the body, right. I care for them just like I knew them uh, since I started, got started in the basement. That's right. In other words, I don't have to learn to care for God's people. That's right. It's automatically, automatically. there. That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. That's right. Do you hear this? He's my life, my joy.